there is an attraction by women to mob guys. Power, maybe the way we dress sometimes, the guys are dressed a little better. You know, manly stuff, you know? Women, despite what anybody says, women want a man to be a man. And for a man to be a man, it doesn't mean you're gonna be abusive to women, you're just a man. A woman feels protected, a woman feels good, a woman feels if she's treated properly, of course. There's just something attractive about mom guys. You just, you know, don't take my word for it, just look at history, it's the truth. Hey everyone, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Hope everybody is doing well. All is very good, very blessed on this end. Even if it wasn't, I would probably say that because you all have enough on your own plate, you know, to deal with and you certainly don't need to hear anything about mine. But regardless, I am very blessed and I thank God every single day for that. We always give him the praise, honor and glory for everything that I have for sure because it could have been a lot worse for me. So me, I'm very thankful. And uh, we talked about that contest, Franzese Wine. Who is going to come to dinner with me? Flown out to Newport Beach, beautiful out here if you've never been here. Great Italian restaurant, one of the best in the city for sure. I know the owner, good friend of mine. Sit down, have a bottle of Franzese Wine. Yes, I'm going to sign a book. Yes, we'll take some photos, meet some friends. We're going to have a great evening. All expenses paid. It's a great contest, great promotion. You can go on franziswine.com and learn all about it. It's easy, something that you have to do. You're gonna enjoy it, I think it's fun. And uh, there should be a link on this uh, video someplace that you can latch on to. Looking forward to it. We got a great response uh, for the first time that we announced it, so people are intrigued. And I thank you for that. I'm glad uh, you wanna have dinner with me. I'm certainly gonna enjoy it, and uh, we're gonna have a good time. And if you're married, we may bring your spouse with you. We're thinking about it, probably we'll do that. Not your girlfriend, and not your boyfriend, but your spouse, yes. So, um, you know, if you're not married, you know, make believe you are and we'll bring you out here. No, I'm only kidding. Anyway, what are we gonna do today? We always talk about, you know, everybody's intrigued with gangsters in the, in the entertainment business. How deeply involved were we in that business? Well, in some ways we were pretty involved, you know? And uh, I have a, came across a story, I think it's gonna be entertaining and enjoyable uh, for you. The top 10 female stars who are also gangsters moles. Now when you become a gangster's girlfriend, you're not a girlfriend, you're a mole. I don't know why, but that's what they call it, you know, who knows. But anyway, I guess it sounds more shady or more, you know, whatever, more gangster. But we'll talk about the top 10. I don't necessarily agree with all of these, but I think they're legit. You know, I try to, you know, make sure that whatever I'm reading to you is legit. But I'm going to read it because I don't memorize all of them. We'll go through it and I'll have my comments on it. Some of the people you're going to know, you're going to know some of the stars and you're going to know, obviously, who they dated. So let's go down the list. Number 10, Donna Reed. Anybody remember Donna Reed? If you're my age, you do. Remember the Donna Reed show? You know, I always say this, I say this, the United States, America is gonna long for the day when Donna Reed, Father Knows Best, uh, My Three Sons, they were good, wholesome stories. And I'm like, you're dating yourself. Yeah, I am. But it was good, wholesome stuff. They were about families, you know? And uh, they're just good stuff. And Donna Reed's show was great. I used to watch it as a kid, I loved it. But anyway, let me read what they say about her. Despite her Oscar-winning performances as the sleazy Alma, a.k.a. Lorene, in the 1953 film From Here to Eternity, Donna Reed had one of the most wholesome personas of any actress during the mid-20th century. I said that. You know, she was great in her television show. Uh, especially when she played the ideal homemaker, Donna Stone, in her self-titled TV series. That's why it's so surprising to learn that she dated uh, mobster Johnny Roselli. Now, you know who Johnny Roselli was. Vegas, out of Chicago, had something to do with the JFK thing. 
Cuba, you know, the whole bit. I'm not going to get into that. We talked about it before. She was dating him. The handsome, charming Roselli seems to have fit in well with the Hollywood crowd. Yes, he was. He was involved in that uh, uh, whole Hollywood entertainment scene at the time. He also dated such stars as Lana Turner and Betty Hutton. I know this for a fact with Lana Turner, among other actresses. Although he was known for his impressive diplomatic skills and being dubbed the Henry Kissinger of the mob, Roselli was also involved in murders, according to author Douglas Thomas. So, Donna Reed, nice, wholesome. Donna Reed showed a whole bit with Johnny Roselli. Johnny Roselli was a good-looking guy, powerful, in Vegas, got involved out of Chicago, uh, you know, and dated a lot of people. He was involved in the entertainment business. So, Gloria Vanderbilt, everybody know who she was. Heiress turned actress and fashion designer. Gloria Vanderbilt had a drama-packed life from when she was a child to being the center of a famous custody trial through her four colorful marriages, four marriages, and various occupations. However, the prominent socialite experienced much turbulence, including the abuse Vanderbilt said she endured at the hands of her first husband, Pat DiCicco, whom she married at the age of 17. In addition to being a film producer and agent, DiCicco was allegedly involved with the Lucky Luciano crime family. I don't know that for a fact. Nearly 13 years older than Vanderbilt, he had previously been married to actress Thelma Todd and Linda Douglas. So here we are. You know, I gotta tell you this, there is an attraction by women to mob guys. Power, maybe the way we dress sometimes, the guys that dressed a little better. You know, manly stuff, you know? Women, despite what anybody says, women want a man to be a man. And for a man to be a man, it doesn't mean you're gonna be abusive to women, you're just a man. A woman feels protected, a woman feels good, a woman feels if she's treated properly, of course. There's just something attractive about mom guys. You just, you know, don't take my word for it. Just look at history. It's the truth. Number eight, Donna Drake. Never heard of her. With her performances in such classic films as Kansas City Confidential, The Girl from Jones Beach, the sultry Donna Drake was a familiar face in the 40s and 50s. One of her most interesting roles had nothing to do with show business. She was the girlfriend of gangster Louis Pretty Amberg. Don't know who he is who alongside his two brothers tried to take charge of racketeering in Brooklyn. I never heard of him, but uh, sounds like he was Jewish. Ambition turned out to be Amberg's downfall in 1935. His body was found in a burning car. Police questioned the starlet, who was in her early 20s at the time. Drake said she didn't even know what line of work Amberg was in or what his real name was, claiming she only knew him as Mr. Cohn. Not only did Drake go on to have a successful career, but her personal life also flourished. She was married later on to Oscar-winning costume designer Travila for 45 years. Okay, so she did okay. Married to a gangster, he didn't do okay. Ended up in a burning car. He was out of Brooklyn, never heard of him, sorry, but at least she had a true love and was married for 45 years. Number seven, June Lang. Don't know who she is either, but Johnny Roselli didn't just date beautiful actresses. He married rising star June Lang, oh yes, I remember that, in 1939. She may not have been as famous as some of his girlfriends, but the lovely blonde, blue-eyed June did have a successful career with such movies as Footlight Serenade, did you ever hear of that? And Stage Door Canteen, musicals that were made around the time of her marriage to Roselli. However, Lang's connection to this mobster, dubbed Handsome Johnny, ultimately hurt her career. When Roselli was not working in Hollywood and Las Vegas on behalf of the Chicago mob, he dabbled in film production, actually co-producing a few movies. June claims she was unaware of his mob ties during their marriage. I don't know about that. As improbable as this may sound on the surface, there's a good chance that Lang really was in the dark about her husband's primary line of work, since his connection to organized crime was not widely known in Hollywood at the time. I don't know about that. Anyway, she did leave him when she said she found out about his criminal activity. She divorced him in 1943. But it seems like Johnny Roselli got around. Number six, Lana Turner. Everybody knows who she is. The stormy love life of film icon Lana Turner included more than one gangster. But the blonde beauty's most famous relationship was with Cohen crime family affiliate Johnny Stampinato. I know who he is. Not so much for the tumultuous relationship itself, but for the way things ended. Stampinato was killed in 1958 by Turner, Turner's 14-year-old daughter, Cheryl Crane. 
You remember that story? It was big news at the time. Who stabbed the mobster to death when he and Turner were having a very heated argument during which Crane feared for her mother's life. Wow, I remember that. On the night of the fatal stab, when I, I don't remember that, I wasn't there, but I remember hearing about that. It was a big case. On the night of the fatal stabbing, Turner was trying to break up with Stampinato. Initially, Turner tried to protect her daughter by telling authorities she was the one who killed Stampinato. However, it soon became clear Cheryl was responsible. The adolescent was exonerated following a coroner's inquest that concluded the stabbing was justifiable homicide due to domestic violence. Naturally, the case sparked a huge scandal, one of the biggest scandals in Hollywood history. Wow. Okay. Number six. Now, this one is very interesting. You're going to know why in a minute. Jane Mansfield. Considering the time Colombo underboss Sonny Francis, familiar, spent at legendary nightclubs like the Copacabana, I can personally vouch for that. I can't tell you how many great nights I spent at the Copa. Loved the place. I saw everybody that was anybody there. My father, they loved him there. We had a great time. Loved the Copacabana. I wish it was still here now. It's not. It makes sense that he would have become acquainted with various celebrities. He knew them all. But it's a little surprising to learn he was romantically involved with some of the most famous actresses of the 50s and 60s, including Marilyn Monroe and Diane Carroll. Marilyn Monroe, I've told this story before. She's on this list. We'll get to that. Diane Carroll, I did hear about that. Didn't know if it was true. My father denied it, so I can't verify it, but they're reporting it here. According to Crime Reads, iconic movie star Jane Mansfield was madly in love with Francis. The night they met at the Latin Quarter nightclub was a memorable one. I was at the Latin Quarter. It was a place my dad frequented, so hey, listen on. Franzese was stunned to see the voluptuous blonde looking down at him from the stage where she had unexpectedly appeared. Mansfield was married to famous bodybuilder and actor Mickey Hargitay at the time. When she told him that her husband would be taking her home that night, Franzese threatened to beat him up if he came to the club. However, the relationship was not a serious one for the handsome mobster who was busy playing the field. <laughs> uh, I got to tell you, people, my dad got around, you know. Did I hear a little bit about this Jane Mansfield thing? Yes. Did my dad ever corroborate that or ever say, yeah, it was true? Not really. He would kind of do what my dad always did. Well, you know, yeah, I knew her, but there was nothing to it. That's what he said. So we'll have to believe him. Number four, Jean Harlow. It's easier to envision the brash, saucy Jean Harlow. Remember her, she was a great actress. As a gangster's mole than most of these actresses. The legendary platinum blonde siren dated infamous mobster Abner Longies Willman, famous guy. He backed the young actress's career in 1930 by loaning Columbia Pictures, uh, Pictures mogul Harry Cohn $500,000 in exchange for giving Harlow a two-picture deal. So he financed her. The 19-year-old divorcee had mostly appeared in bit parts until then. The early 1930s films she starred in for Columbia and MGM skyrocketed her to fame. So he gave her her first break. And um, Harlow was cast as gangster's girlfriends, a number of movies. She was a great actress. Go watch it. He was, she, was a side, uh, she was opposite Jimmy Cagney a lot. Public Enemy in 1931 was one of her big ones. She would help to create the flashy, brazen, hard-edged image moviegoers had of gangster moles in the 1930s, one that would become a long-lasting stereotype. She was married three times following her relationship with Dwillman, who was dubbed the Al Capone of New Jersey. I never heard that, but maybe it, it fits, who knows. She was married to a guy by the name of Paul Byrne, and he committed suicide two months after the wedding. Wow, who knows why, but if you're committing suicide two months after you're married, something's going wrong. Number three, Billie Holiday. It's no secret that legendary, you know who Billie Holiday is? Great singer, terrific singer. It's no secret that legendary jazz singer Billie Holiday had a very troubled personal life. Between her well-documented addiction problems and her abusive childhood, as well as other adversaries, it's amazing she was able to accomplish so much during her 44 years. And who was she involved with? Her third and last husband, Louis McKay, who she married in 1957, was a very shady character, never heard of him, who abused Holiday, stole her money, and was described as a wannabe gangster, wannabe. He did reportedly work as a mob enforcer, may have been involved 
and other criminal activities. She left McKay, but was still married to him when she died a short time later in 1959. Okay, Phyllis McClure, these are some old time. The McGuire sister was one of the most popular female singing groups of the 1950s. The trio of ministers' daughters also had one of the most straight-laced images until glamorous lead singer Phyllis McGuire, they were a very popular group, began a scandalous romance with notorious Chicago Mafia boss Sam Giancana. Yes, I'm aware of this. Giancana was drawn to McGuire when he saw her performing with her sisters at the Desert Inn in 1959. And you know Chicago controlled those uh, casinos at that point. He subsequently arranged to cancel the large debt she owed the casino. Even though McGuire testified before a grand jury in 1965, she and Giancana were just friends. She later admitted they had a romantic relationship. Still, she explained in a televised interview she didn't know who he was when they first met. I mean, come on. You had to be living under a rock not to know who Sam G Giancana was. Uh, but she was with him for quite some time. G Giancana and McGuire's passionate relationship was depicted in the 1995 HBO movie Sugar Time. Go watch it. And now we come to number one, Marilyn Monroe. And if I could show you, they got my picture right there on this. I don't know why. I didn't have anything to do with this. Uh, but let me read the story. You know the story. I've said it before. In light of Marilyn Monroe's wild, sometimes scandalous lifestyle, it almost seems par for the course she would have dated a gangster at some point. However, Monroe, who is rarely one to do things on a small scale, has been romantically linked to numerous high-profile criminals, including ladies' man Sonny Francis, my dad would like that, and reportedly Chicago mob boss Sam Giancana. I've heard that too. Uh, we all know about Marilyn. I'm not going to go into her past. Marilyn was a very different type from the women Giancana was most famously involved with. Phyllis McGuire, we just talked about that. Giancana was with Monroe on her last full night alive. Now, we talked about this. I did a video on uh, Marilyn Monroe's death, and, you know, I'm not going to get into that again. Look at the video. It's in all my content there with videos, during which he tried to talk her out of going public about her alleged affair with President John F. Kennedy. Remember, she was going to go public about that. Go and look at my video. I don't want to get into all of that again. Was the mob involved in that? Look at my video and, uh, and make your own decision at that point. Come to your own conclusion, I should say. Her romance with Francis was part of a love, love triangle with her ex-husband, baseball great Joe DiMaggio, who was still in love with her. I'm gonna read what they say, and then I'll tell you what I know about it. The memorable evening that Monroe sang happy birthday to President Kennedy during a Democratic fundraiser at Madison Square Garden, DiMaggio was chasing Francis around the arena in an attempt to confront him about the affair. Francis was trying to avoid the meeting because he admired DiMaggio. My dad loved Joe DiMaggio, as he later claimed he was ashamed of himself for getting involved with Monroe. I don't know when my father ever claimed that. But I told you what I know about the thing. I, I believe there is truth to this, and I didn't know that this article was going to appear. I just happened to, you know, be leafing through things, and this article showed up. Uh, but I will tell you this, my dad did like Joe DiMaggio very much. He was a Yankee fan. And of course, because DiMaggio was Italian, he liked him even more. And he was great. The Yankee Clipper, terrific center field, the whole bit. Loved him. But I told you, my father did say he had an affair with Marilyn Monroe. And as a matter of fact, what my dad claimed or what he told me, and you know, the more I'm hearing about it, the more I'm starting to believe this, is that when Marilyn Monroe was in an affair with Robert Kennedy, and Robert Kennedy found out that my that Marilyn uh, had dated or cared about my father, that's when he targeted my father for prosecution and went after him. And it made sense because my father wasn't the biggest guy around at that time. I mean, there was other big names. My dad was relatively unknown, you know, until Robert Kennedy and the FBI just targeted him in a way that we just couldn't understand. So it makes sense. You know, there again, Robert Kennedy, jealous, was in love with Marilyn Monroe the way John Kennedy was at one time. So, you know, powerful position. Go after Sonny Francis. He's a gangster. I don't know about the story about, uh, you know, DiMaggio chasing my father around Madison Square Garden. I never heard that. But, hey, I didn't know everything. You know, my dad told me uh, a lot of stuff. But then again, you know, he's my mother. He didn't want to tell me too much. It wasn't until my mother passed away that he started telling me things about his prior affairs. So not something you normally tell your son or any of your children. So... 
But uh, I never heard him say he was ashamed of that relationship. But anyway, that's it. So they got my picture there, and uh, my, I pop up everywhere at times. I don't know. But anyway, that's it. So these were 10 people, 10 moles that got involved with gangsters, and you hear the story. I know you love to hear this stuff about organized crime and mafia gangsters, so I still want to relate that to you, quite honestly. I hope that you look at me a little different. I'd rather give you my perspective on things that are important, that can impact your life in the right way, that can help you. I have two platforms, Mob Ties, Remade. I'm getting into a deal most likely with Mike Tyson, and we are going to give you the best advice that we possibly can have after all of our years of experience, all the mistakes that we made, all the failures that we had in our life, and the fact that we were able to overcome this, we're creating a platform where we really want to help everybody, young men, older men, women if they need our help, everyone, because it's time in our life to give back. We've been doing it for a while. Mike is passionate about it, so am I. So just keep your eye out. We're gonna be announcing that uh, within the next couple of months for sure. That's it for today. How do I always leave you? Same way, be safe, be healthy. God bless every one of you. Yes, I'll see you next time. Take care.